So I wanted to take today to just chat a little bit about my thoughts about the public's reaction to Orion, uh, which is Meta's augmented reality true set of glasses. Um, obviously, this channel talks a lot about the Apple Vision Pro, the future of computing. I talk about AI, AR, MR, XR, whatever you want to call the set of technologies that are coming. And um, frankly, the biggest competitor that Apple has in the augmented reality space is Meta. And it seems like it's sort of the holy grail of the industry right now. VR will have its applications, but augmented reality is the thing that has the potential to replace the phone. And that's why everybody cares so much about it. And by the way, it's the reason why uh, Tim Cook has been saying that he's been wanting to make an augmented reality device for so long. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So one of the big things that uh, I have heard in reaction to Orion is that people get it finally. People finally understand why augmented reality can replace the phone. And so what Meta announced was a new Quest, which basically uh, is a stripped down version of the Quest 3. They announced a special edition of their Meta Ray-Bans, which are not too dissimilar from these glasses, just that they have a camera, a microphone, and some speakers embedded in them, as well as connectivity to uh, make their uh, uh, to give you access to Meta's AI. And then finally, last but not least, and actually probably last and not least, one more thing, Meta's Orion AR glasses. Now, the AR glasses use a very special technology called Waveguide to basically embed the display within the glass and the frame of the glasses themselves. It's a way of hacking a display onto the glasses. And what's interesting about it is that right now, that technology is very nascent. It is way, way, way ahead of the release. It's the thing that makes those glasses cost, I think that people have said, at least $10,000, at least in terms of like production costs. And it's the thing that is the limiting factor to the true augmented reality future that all of these companies have predicted. Now, it's an impressive demo, and it's the best version of this that we've seen although we've seen some in the past. In the past, we saw Snap's Spectacles, uh, not actually just the week before release with a smaller field of view. Before that, I think it was Magic Leap that was really pioneering this technology in the space and doing most of the work there. And now it's Meta. Meta is out front and they are the best positioned uh, of those three companies to execute on this display technology, which is the thing that will unlock augmented reality glasses in the future. Now, there are some things we don't know. We don't know what other companies have this, including Apple. We don't know uh, what the developer reaction is going to be to knowing about these glasses, but not having access to them. We don't know whether Snapchat will be able to, or Snap, will be able to come from behind and uh, court a developer community by having this technology more accessible to developers early on. And we don't know whether developers have enough goodwill with Apple to bet on the Vision Pro, and likewise, whether the Vision Pro's software will be the thing that runs on Apple's version of these glasses. Because I think there is one thing that everyone agrees on, which is the thing that we do know, which is that basically every company's holy grail is to get to the point where these Orion style glasses with the waveguide technology or some display overlaid on the actual real world is the real endpoint that most of these companies want to achieve, not this middle ground that Apple has tried to achieve with the Apple Vision Pro. So we have a theory here on the Verge Chat the theory of, of wearable success. Mm -hmm where fiddliness and attractiveness is on one axis and value is on another, and most things don't make it. Basically, only the Apple Watch is like up and down, yeah. right? This or has become like a six-dimensional graph, Joanna. It's, it's not important that you understand it. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry the Vision Pro is like not useful enough to overcome the fact you have to wear it on your face. I think what Meta did was smart for them, and that they're taking advantage of an area where Apple doesn't have uh, you know, they will not show something like this five, three, three, four, five years in advance. They just aren't going to do it, right? They're, they're never would they do that. And you could argue, in fact, maybe they should, but they maybe don't. They it's just, they're not, they're not going to do it. But, uh, but what bugs me is when people are like, well, look how, look how much further Meta is ahead because Meta has this and Apple still got the Vision Pro. And it's like, okay, well, the Vision Pro was announced more than a year ago and shipped earlier this year, and you can go take one off the shelf right now for $3,500. This thing costs at least 10 grand and doesn't exist and won't ship 
ever and whatever like it will ship even meta says three to five years which i i i just say okay 2029 2030 is what we're talking about here that when they come out with glasses they'll still be running vision os but if they're not if they actually have <laughs> an entirely different operating system for the glasses it really makes you wonder what the hell jaws is doing running marketing yeah. where they gave the name vision to the other platform and the one that you actually use for your vision isn't named vision i think it's because they know that it's one platform right right i've heard this theory from the yeah. guys yeah well it's not there it's not because first of all they, there's no value here. <laughs> it's, like, a you know, it's a developer kit yeah. I mean, that's what i mean by that like they're not they're not trying to sell this thing widely the, the operating system is surprisingly the whole idea, everything about it is surprisingly AR focused for a VR headset, right? The pass through, they, they, they built these R1 chips to decrease the latency to uh, at almost impossible levels uh, of the number of milliseconds, all to simulate what you would get if you just put a pair of $10 chemistry class safety glasses on, right? I mean, that's all they're simulating. <laughs> it's an incredible amount of effort. The whole eyesight thing where they show your eyes on the front with simulated depth to make it look like that. It's it's all, it's simulating AR from your perspective using it and from everybody's perspective looking at it yep. as best they can. As best they can with a product that they, that they could ship. Because even like I look at the Orion glasses, which are smaller and much closer to being normal glasses, and then somebody puts them on their face and they still look kind of stupid. Like they're cool because they're cool technology, whatever, but like in no way are they like cool looking glasses. And that is like the bleeding edge of the bleeding edge of where we are in terms of being able to make yeah. these things awesome. Like, should we be should we be dinging these things harder for their face wearing issues for the foreseeable future? It's an AR operating system developer kit that right. they're calling a product. And I mean, I, this is not, or, this is not retrospective kit, too. Right? I mean, in, at, at, in, the, at the in, time they shifted, I thought, who should buy this? No, nobody should buy this unless they're a developer or they want a taste of the future. Because like, it's clear that this is just, we need, it's Apple saying we need to ship something. Some other company would say, we need to show somebody our prototype. But Apple, for whatever reason, and we can argue about whether they should keep that strategy, Apple didn't do it that way. Apple is going to ship that product or they're not going to talk about it. And so they shipped it. And that's what Vision Pro is. It's, and it's basically a tech demo as a shipping product and it, it's got a lot of cool things about it but you know i would never recommend that anybody buy it today well i would say one of the most fiddly things about the orion is that you need to work at facebook and apparently have ten thousand dollars in there's order to have one yeah um it's pretty fit it's just very fiddly <laughs> like whether or not it's in your face like doesn't matter <laughs> like it, it's, it's a product you can't buy you need to grow crystal lenses in the basement of your underground hawaiian lair apparently to have them very fiddly like you're just in the hole and then you're a little bit further in the hole so it's not like you have to compare it to what apple has and we don't know what apple has because apple's not going to tell us and so does, could this mean apple is behind it could it, but it doesn't necessarily mean so let me start with my sort of frustrations with what the reaction has been to meta's orion glasses which is that meta is further ahead than apple and that apple's approach with the apple vision pro is a dead end now one thing that I agree with is that pass through, video pass through is likely never gonna be the solution. Neelai Patel, all the way back in, I guess, February, when the reviews for the Apple Vision Pro were coming out, said it perfectly. He would rather be out here in the real world and have computers be aids to him than be in there, in the simulator of an augmented reality headset that Apple has thrown together with the Vision Pro because the real world is just so much more compelling. He focused on things like the display technologies, which only show like less than 50% of the colors that your eyes can really see. Uh, he talked about the classic problems that a pass-through device will have to uh, uh, confront no matter what, which is the problems of cameras and displays, traditional displays. For example, like you're looking at this right here. I had to set my, my, my camera, my phone, in a way that exposes both the background and the foreground, which is great here because I've got the, the sun out in front of me, but I didn't frame it the other direction because the sun would blow out either the sky or the foreground. And Apple Vision Pro, 
piping in a video feed into your eyes has to deal with that on the fly without any configuration every second, every part of the day. And there are inherent trade-offs that cameras cannot replicate that your real eyes are able to uh, that make this simulation, again, of augmented reality a ultimate dead end in the long term. So if everyone agrees that the real thing that you want to do is have a pair of glasses like this where you can see the real world and overlay pieces of digital content onto it through something like a waveguide system, then it's understandable why people were so blown away by Orion. Um, ben Thompson at Stratechery is the one that I think uh, most of the tech world has been interested in commentating on because he is a industry analyst, right? And he is uh, famously talked about the importance of a quality product. And um, he has, I think, a very good level of taste and he, he has a great website and uh, he got to try on these glasses. And he said it was the first time that he could ever understand why augmented reality could replace the phone. And more importantly, he talked about why Apple uh, was taking the wrong approach with the Apple Vision Pro. Now, that is the point at which I kind of start to disagree with him, as I've said before. With Apple's approach, I tend to think that, as I have said on this channel, in fact, when I hiked up this mountain uh, in one of the first videos on this channel to talk about it, that Apple's approach is an approach that's trying to court and orient developers towards the future. Now, you could argue that Meta's approach is the same, because guess what? They announced this Orion headset, which is supposed to give developers a line of sight to the point at which they can see themselves developing for an augmented reality headset. But here's the difference. Apple is shipping the Apple Vision Pro, yes, at an ungodly price, yes, with tons of trade-offs, including a battery pack and a heavy headset and these weird, creepy <laughs> eyesight, googly eye type eyes on the front of it and um, all sorts of issues related to manufacturing and uh, development and things like that. But they're shipping it. Orion is a tech demo. And it was an impressive tech demo at that. And some of the things that Ben Thompson talked about and many others have talked about is the fact that even though the displays are low resolution, it's more important that the world is high resolution. And even though the, um, comp the actual compute of the device had to be offloaded to a puck, that that is the right trade-off for uh, the lightness and ease of, of, uh, of uh, the comfortability, I guess, and the ergonomics of an actual pair of glasses that you can wear rather than a giant headset that you have to carry around with you. And guess what? I have critiqued Apple Vision Pro for a lot of the same reasons. But it was a tech demo, and Meta is not shipping those glasses for at least a couple of years, if not more than that. He's, you know, the problems that Meta is going to face with those Orion glasses are that they have to build an entire operating system. And yes, they've got Quest, but the Quest was not built for augmented reality, it was built for virtual reality. They're going to have to court developers who, Andrew Bosworth, who I think is in charge of uh, reality labs there at Meta, said that they have done a bad job at. They have actually angered their developers because of the, <laughs> it has been such a rocky background. Misa, are you okay, baby? It's okay, you stay. And then third of all, that they will have to worry about manufacturing, which is the biggest and hardest part. Meta is not a hardware company. They sell some hardware products and they've had a couple of hits, but they have not had to deal with manufacturing in the same way that Apple has had to for their entire existence. If Apple is great at anything and Tim Cook is great at anything, it is bending the, the supply chain and the manufacturing world, really, to his will. And so Apple has some real advantages here. Now, Meta announcing Orion gives themselves a leg up, maybe with developers who can see this and see this as the future of computing. But it, Apple, I truly believe, has the better developer tooling system for this device for a couple of reasons. First of all, there was already a massive base of iOS and iPadOS and macOS developers that will be able to use those skills and understanding of those core technologies uh, in building for an augmented reality future. Number two, 
the head start that Apple has building Vision OS and using iPad OS and TV OS as the basis for, for Vision OS gives them an advantage of already having built out the entire set of primitives for augmented reality that they think are important to, for version one product and a version two OS in the future of computing in a way that Meta is already having to rethink for at least the third time. And so that is all to say that it is frustrating to me that we are comparing a unreleased, not shipping product to a product that is already being manufactured and shipped in the probably hundreds of thousands off the get-go. That said, there are reasons why the temptation to compare the two is very tempting. And I think that there is a, a lot of comparison that we will do on this channel and that the entire tech world and the tech media will do in the comparison of these devices that is worthwhile. Here's a little bit uh, of an example, which actually also comes from Ben Thompson's review at St Stratechery, which is that they are in versions of each other, Orion and Apple Vision Pro. One, <laughs> and I'm talking beyond the fact that one is a relatively low compute unshipping product, uh, which is even more expensive than the Apple Vision Pro. And the other one is this clunky headset that's shipping to, to people that is a simulation of reality. There are actual fundamental differences and similarities that I think we can learn a lot about a future for augmented and extended reality, uh, like, for example, the input device. On Apple Vision Pro, there's a little bit of a hack, right? It's using cameras to simulate an understanding of things like look and pinch, right? On Meta's uh, Orion, it's using a similar paradigm where you look and you pinch to control it, or you use hand gestures to control it. They're just doing it with a wristband instead of uh, with cameras. And so there's something there to that, that it seems like these two companies have converged on a input mechanism, which is look and tap. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll understand that there are also fundamental limitations to that. And by the way, I'll continue talking about those. Namely, that text input is very difficult when you're controlling something with look and tap. There's really not a good solution yet towards building it out. Um, it also does things like make the input resolution very low, even if the output resolution is very high. So for example, on Vision Pro, you have to have these big chunky buttons that your eyes can lock on to, and then you can pinch on, rather than uh, a Mac display, which has a high input resolution with a mouse and a high output resolution with its beautiful retina display. And so it is interesting that these two companies have converged on this place where there is already a compromise. Don't you think me so? <laughs> the last thing that I'll talk about is where they converge, which is that Apple Vision Pro is a simulation of what Apple wants to build. They believe that Apple Vision Pro is an augmented reality device. Again, if you've been following this channel for a long time, you'll understand that that is where this channel began, is a critique of Apple Vision Pro as an augmented reality device and not as a virtual reality one. And so what that means is that the digital content on Apple Apple's Vision Pro is very high resolution, where the real world is actually very low resolution, which shows a weird set of priorities for Apple, especially when they're trying to build an augmented reality device. They just believe that it's the right set of compromises for a shipping product. On Meta's end of the spectrum, they have a very high resolution world. It's the real world, actually. You're looking through your own eyes in a set of glasses, not a set of a series of lenses and cameras and displays. And on top of that real world is overlaid the augmented reality display, which is very low resolution. So on one hand, with Orion, you have a low resolution digital content on a high resolution world. And on Apple Vision Pro, you have high resolution digital content on a uh, low resolution world. And I think that that fundamental trade-off is uh, also indicative of how these two products will meet in the future. That is that Apple and Meta are actually aiming for the same thing. There's a reason why Quest has passed through and why they're shipping the Meta Ray-Bans, right? And that they have pre-announced this Orion device because that Orion device is what the entire industry wants to achieve in a product that is uh, scalable, in terms of manufacturing, uh, uh, attractive to consumers, and uh, ends up getting a killer app of some kind. 
And so that's where I'll leave things here, which is that we still don't know, even with as compelling as Orion is in terms of a vision for a future of this device, in that everybody is running in that direction for a form factor, we still don't know what the killer app is for these uh, augmented and virtual reality devices. Uh, I'm still working on a review of the Apple Vision Pro, by the way, if you're interested in that, please tell me what you want to know more about because I'm uh, really doing quite a bit of work to try and package that up in a way that makes sense. So let me know what you want me to review on Apple Vision Pro. But we still don't know what is unique about these devices and how that, well, let me backtrack a little bit. We know what's unique about these devices, but we don't know how that you, those set of unique features is going to translate into a, a set of real world use cases that will actually make this product attractive for people, especially at high prices, which is where the real game is going to be played in the foreseeable future. So just wanted to ramble about this a little bit. Uh, I'm very curious to engage with you in the comments about what you think about my initial impressions and what you think about the comparison between a product that is not shipping but is the true future of the, of the uh, product category versus a product that is shipping and is kind of a set of compromises that brings the future into the present. Uh, and then also on top of that, whether it's even fair for me to kind of be interested in this cross comparison of the Apple Vision Pro and Orion or whether it makes more sense for me to compare Apple Vision Pro to the Meta Ray-Bans or to the MetaQuest. And so I know that you all are going to give me some great things to think about in the comment section. It will inspire videos over the next couple of weeks. It's also October officially, so I'm calling this Vlogtober in uh, honor of uh, many great YouTubers who came before me. And so I hope to kind of give you uh, a lot more of a back and forth this, uh, this time of year uh, as we go into one of the best months of the year, in my opinion. Anyways, thanks for watching. Leave those comments below. I'm very excited to put together my review, and I'm very excited to kind of hear what you have to say.